Welcome to Miss Scarlet. Subscribe and don't miss out on Patreon. Have fun. Asa hunched over his desk, his eyes fixed on the computer screen before him. Numbers scrolled by as he inputted data into the company's financial software. To the casual observer, he appeared the epitome of corporate conformity: crisp white shirt, muted tie, and charcoal suit jacket draped over the back of his chair. But beneath the starched collar, a secret glimmered. Asa's hand unconsciously drifted to his throat, fingertips brushing against the smooth metal hidden just below his shirt. The delicate gold chain lay cool against his skin, its pendant nestled out of sight. A private smile tugged at the corners of his mouth as he thought of the growing collection waiting for him at home. Hey, Asa, you got those Q3 projections ready? The booming voice of his supervisor snapped Asa back to reality. He straightened in his chair, tugging at his tie. Just about finished, Mr. Carlson. I'll have them on your desk within the hour. Make it thirty minutes. The board's breathing down my neck. Asa nodded, already turning back to his screen. As the sound of Mr. Carlson's footsteps faded, he allowed himself a small sigh. The pressure had been mounting lately, whispers of potential promotions circulating through the office grapevine. While the idea of advancement was appealing, it also brought a twinge of anxiety. More responsibility meant more scrutiny, less time for. He pushed the thought aside, diving back into the sea of numbers. Time seemed to crawl as he meticulously double-checked his work. Graphs and charts taking shape beneath his fingertips. With five minutes to spare, Asa hit print and gathered the stack of papers, smoothing his tie before making his way to Mr. Carlson's office. A flash of color caught his eye as he passed the reception area. A woman he didn't recognize stood chatting with the receptionist. Her vibrant scarf, a stark contrast to the muted tones of the office. Asa found himself slowing, drawn in by the elegant drape of the fabric and the way it complemented her olive skin. The woman turned, sensing his gaze, and their eyes met. Asa felt a jolt of recognition, not of her face, but of the knowing glimmer in her dark eyes. It was a look he'd seen in the mirror countless times. The spark of someone who understood the power of personal style. Ah,、oh, there you are, Mr. Carlson's voice shattered the moment. Asa tore his gaze away, hurrying to hand over the reports. As he retreated to his desk, he couldn't shake the lingering warmth of that brief connection. The rest of the workday passed in a blur of meetings. And spreadsheets. By the time Asa shut down his computer, most of his coworkers had already filtered out. He savored these quiet moments, when the office lay still and expectant. Shrugging on his jacket, he allowed himself a small anticipatory smile. The night was young, and Grace was waiting. The short walk to the parking garage stretched his legs after hours of sitting. Asa's pace quickened as he approached his sensible sedan, fingers already reaching for his keys. The moment the car door closed behind him, he felt the first stirrings of transformation. The drive home was a study in contrasts. Outside, brake lights glowed red in the gathering dusk, harried commuters jockeying for position. Inside Asa's car, a cocoon of possibility grew. He hummed along to the radio, fingers tapping the steering wheel in time with the music. With each mile, the weight of the day seemed to lift from his shoulders. Asa's apartment building was modest but well maintained, its brick facade warm in the last rays of sunlight. He nodded a greeting to Mrs. Abernathy from 3B as they passed in the lobby, her arms laden with groceries. The elderly woman smiled back. 
oblivious to the excitement thrumming beneath Asa's calm exterior. The moment his front door clicked shut behind him, Asa was in motion. Jacket and tie were draped over a chair, shoes kicked off with uncharacteristic abandon. He made a beeline for the bedroom, fingers already working at his shirt buttons. The transformation began slowly at first, like a flower unfurling in the sun. Asa stood before the full-length mirror, watching as Grace emerged. Gone was the stiff posture of the office, replaced by a languid Grace. Careful hands applied makeup, accentuating cheekbones and softening angular features. A silky blouse replaced the starched shirt, flowing fabric caressing skin that had been constricted all day. Slim-fitting trousers hugged curves that Asa kept carefully hidden at work. With each piece of the outfit, Grace grew more vibrant, more real. The final touch lay waiting in a velvet-lined box. Asa, no, Grace now, opened it reverently. Inside nestled her latest acquisition, a stunning Art Deco necklace, all geometric lines and sparkling crystals. She lifted it carefully, savoring the weight of it in her hands before fastening it around her neck. Grace studied her reflection, a slow smile spreading across her face. The necklace was perfect, its vintage glamour the ideal complement to her carefully curated look. She touched it gently, thinking of the moment she'd first spotted it in the window of her favorite antique shop. It had called to her, another piece of the puzzle that was her true self. With a final adjustment to her perfectly coiffed wig, Grace was ready to face the world. She gathered her purse and keys, pausing for one last glance in the mirror. The woman who looked back exuded confidence and style, a far cry from the reserved accountant who had left the office mere hours ago. The night air held a hint of autumn crispness as Grace stepped out onto the sidewalk. She reveled in the freedom of movement, no longer constrained by Asa's conservative suit. Her heels clicked a staccato rhythm on the pavement, each step an affirmation of her identity. Grace's destination was a small bistro several blocks away, a cozy spot where the staff knew her by name and never blinked an eye at her glamorous attire. As she rounded the corner, a familiar voice called out, Grace! Darling, you look fabulous! Marjorie, a fellow regular at the bistro, air-kissed Grace's cheeks in greeting. The older woman's eyes sparkled as she took in Grace's outfit. That necklace is divine! Another new addition to your collection? Grace nodded, pleased by the recognition. Found it last weekend. Couldn't resist. Well, it's stunning on you. Come, join me for a drink. I want to hear all about it. The two women settled at a corner table, Marjorie already signaling for the waiter. Grace basked in the warm glow of acceptance, of being seen and appreciated for who she truly was. As they sipped their wine and chatted, she felt the last vestiges of Asa's workday stress melt away. Their conversation flowed easily, touching on everything from fashion trends to local gossip. Grace found herself recounting her encounter with the stylish woman at the office, careful to frame it from Asa's perspective. Marjorie leaned in, intrigued. Sounds like someone worth getting to know. Did you catch her name? Grace shook her head, a twinge of regret coloring her voice. No, it was just a brief moment but there was something about her. A kindred spirit, maybe. Well, keep your eyes peeled, darling. You never know when opportunity might knock again. As the evening wore on, other regulars drifted in and out of their orbit. Grace reveled in the easy camaraderie, the freedom to be herself without fear of judgment. Here, she wasn't the quiet accountant or the office wallflower, she was grace, vivacious and charming, with a keen eye for style and a ready laugh. It was well past midnight 
when Grace finally bid her farewells and stepped back out into the night. The streets were quieter now, the city settling into its nocturnal rhythms. She walked slowly, savoring these last moments of freedom before the inevitable return to Asa's world. Back in her apartment, Grace carefully removed each piece of her ensemble. The necklace was the last to go, lovingly returned to its velvet nest. As she wiped away the last traces of makeup, she studied her reflection. The face that looked back was neither fully Asa nor fully Grace, but something in between. The true self that existed beneath both personas. Sleep came easily that night, dreams filled with shimmering fabrics and the tinkling of jewelry. But as dawn broke, reality reasserted itself. Asa rose, donning his corporate armor once more. The only trace of grace that remained was the faintest hint of perfume lingering on his skin. The office buzzed with its usual Monday morning energy as Asa made his way to his desk. Snippets of weekend plans and complaints about traffic floated around him, but his mind was elsewhere. He found himself scanning the cubicles, wondering if he'd catch another glimpse of the mystery woman from Friday. Morning, Asa. How was your weekend? He turned to find Linda from HR smiling at him, a stack of folders tucked under her arm. Oh, uh, pretty quiet. Just caught up on some reading. It wasn't entirely a lie. Grace had pored over the latest fashion magazines, drinking in the upcoming trends and imagining how to incorporate them into her wardrobe. Linda nodded sympathetically. Well, hopefully things will get more exciting soon. Did you hear about the new project manager starting today? I hear she's got quite the impressive resume. Asa's interest peaked. No, I hadn't heard. What department? She'll be working closely with finance, actually. I think Mr. Carlson mentioned wanting to streamline some of our processes. You'll probably be seeing a lot of her. Before Asa could probe further, Linda was called away to deal with some paperwork snafu. He settled into his chair booting up his computer with a mixture of curiosity and apprehension. A new project manager meant change, and change always carried risk. The morning crawled by in a haze of emails and conference calls. Isa found his attention wandering, his hand drifting to his throat where Grace's necklaces usually rested. He caught himself just as his fingers brushed against his tie, glancing around furtively, to see if anyone had noticed. It was nearing lunchtime when Mr. Carlson's voice boomed across the office. All right, everyone, gather around. I've got someone I'd like you all to meet. Asa rose, smoothing his tie as he joined the cluster of co-workers. His breath caught as a familiar figure stepped into view beside Mr. Carlson. It was her, the woman from Friday, still radiating effortless style even in corporate attire. This is Juliana Vasquez, our new project manager. She'll be working closely with several departments to help us streamline our operations. I expect you all to give her your full cooperation. Juliana smiled, her gaze sweeping across the assembled faces. When her eyes met Asa's, there was a flicker of recognition. He felt a flush creep up his neck, suddenly hyper-aware of his own appearance. Thank you for the warm welcome, Juliana said, her voice carrying a hint of an accent Asa couldn't quite place. I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you and learning about the great work you do here. As the group began to disperse, Asa found himself rooted to the spot. Juliana was making her way through the crowd, shaking hands and exchanging pleasantries. He watched, mesmerized by her easy confidence and the way she commanded attention without seeming to try. Suddenly, she was standing before him, hand extended. And you are... Asa, he managed, hoping his palm wasn't as clammy as it felt. Asa Patel, 
I work in finance. Ah, perfect. I'm sure we'll be working together quite a bit then. Juliana's handshake was firm, her smile genuine. I remember seeing you on Friday, actually. You have excellent taste in accessories. Asa blinked, momentarily confused. Then he remembered. The hint of chain visible at his collar. A moment of carelessness that morning. He'd been so caught up in thoughts of grace that he'd forgotten to tuck the necklace fully out of sight. Oh, um, thank you, he stammered, fighting the urge to reach for his neck. It was a... a gift. Juliana's eyes sparkled with interest. Well, whoever gave it to you has impeccable taste. I'd love to hear more about it sometime. But for now, I should probably continue my rounds. It was lovely meeting you, Asa. As she moved on to the next group of co-workers, Asa let out a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. His mind raced, replaying the brief interaction. Had she really noticed his necklace on Friday? And if so, what did she think? The rest of the day passed in a fog of distraction. Asa found his gaze continually drawn to Juliana as she made her way around the office, chatting with various team members and taking notes. There was something about her that seemed to bridge his two worlds. Professional yet stylish, confident yet approachable. As he packed up to leave, Asa's thoughts were a jumble of conflicting emotions. Excitement at the possibility of a kindred spirit, fear of exposure, and a growing curiosity about Juliana herself. He touched the hidden necklace, a talisman of sorts, and made a silent promise to Grace. Whatever happened, he wouldn't let this opportunity pass him by. It was time to take a risk, to see if there might be a way to merge his two selves into something whole and authentic. With that resolve firmly in mind, Asa stepped out into the evening, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The next few days brought a flurry of activity to the office. Juliana wasted no time diving into her role, scheduling meetings and poring over reports. Asa found himself increasingly drawn into her orbit, his expertise in the company's financial systems making him a valuable resource. Their interactions were professional, but tinged with an undercurrent of something. Asa couldn't quite put his finger on it, but there was a warmth in Juliana's smile, a lingering quality to her gaze that made his pulse quicken. He found himself taking extra care with his appearance each morning, channeling a hint of Grace's flair into his work attire. It was during one of their impromptu brainstorming sessions that things began to shift. Juliana had commandeered a small conference room, spreadsheets and flowcharts scattered across the table. Asa leaned in, pointing out a discrepancy in the numbers. If we adjust the allocation here, he said, reaching for a pen, it should free up resources for the new initiative without impacting the bottom line. Juliana nodded, her brow furrowed in concentration. As she leaned closer to examine the figures, her scarf brushed against Asa's arm. The silky material sent a jolt through him, awakening memories of Grace's carefully curated wardrobe. Brilliant, Juliana murmured, her fingers tracing the path of Asa's calculations. You have quite an eye for detail, Asa. It's impressive. He felt a flush of pride at her words, straightening slightly. Thank you. I've always enjoyed finding patterns in the numbers, seeing how all the pieces fit together. Juliana sat back, regarding him with interest. It shows, you know, that attention to detail comes through in other ways too, like your accessories, always so perfectly chosen. Asa's hand flew to his throat, where today's hidden treasure lay concealed. It was a delicate silver chain, with a small Art Deco pendant, one of Grace's more subtle pieces. He'd agonized over wearing it, but something had compelled him 
to take the risk. You noticed? The words came out softer than he'd intended, a mix of fear and hope coloring his tone. Juliana's smile was gentle, understanding. I always notice beautiful things, Asa, and the way you incorporate those little touches, it's like you're expressing a part of yourself that doesn't quite fit the corporate mold. The air in the room seemed to grow thick, charged with potential. Asa's heart raced, teetering on the edge of a precipice. Could he trust this moment? Dare he reveal a glimpse of his true self? Before he could decide, a knock at the door shattered the tension. Mr. Carlson's head poked in, oblivious to the atmosphere he'd interrupted. Ah, oh, good. You're both here. Juliana, we need to go over the timeline for the Q4 rollout. Asa, can you pull together a summary of the projected cost savings? I'll need it for the board meeting tomorrow. Just like that, the spell was broken. Asa gathered his papers, nodding his assent to Mr. Carlson's request. As he turned to leave, he caught Juliana's eye. There was a question there, an invitation left unspoken. We'll continue this later? She asked, her tone casual, but her gaze intent. Asa nodded, not trusting his voice. As he hurried back to his desk, his mind whirled with possibilities. Had he imagined the understanding in Juliana's eyes? Or was there truly a chance that she might accept both sides of him, Asa and Grace alike? The rest of the day passed in a blur of focused work, Asa channeling his nervous energy into the task at hand. By the time he shut down his computer, the office had grown quiet, most of his co-workers having already left for the day. As he gathered his things, a shadow fell across his desk. He looked up to find Juliana standing there, her own bag slung over her shoulder. Heading out? She asked her tone light, but her eyes searching. Asa nodded, suddenly acutely aware of the necklace hidden beneath his shirt. Yes, just finished up the report for Mr. Carlson. Always the dedicated employee, Juliana said with a smile. She hesitated for a moment, then seemed to come to a decision. Listen, Asa, I was wondering if you might like to grab a drink. There's a little place around the corner I've been meaning to try. The invitation hung in the air between them, laden with unspoken possibilities. Asa felt a familiar war within himself, the cautious accountant urging him to make an excuse, to retreat to the safety of his apartment and Grace's world. But another part of him, a part that had been growing stronger with each interaction with Juliana, whispered of chances not taken and regrets yet to come. I'd like that, he heard himself say, surprising them both with the steadiness of his voice. Juliana's smile widened, a glimmer of something like relief in her eyes. Wonderful, shall we? As they walked to the elevator together, Asa felt as though he were stepping into uncharted territory, the lines between his two worlds were beginning to blur, and he wasn't sure if he was terrified or exhilarated by the prospect. The bar Juliana had chosen was a cozy, dimly lit affair, all polished wood and soft jazz. As they settled into a quiet booth, Asa felt some of his nervousness begin to ebb. There was something about the atmosphere that reminded him of Grace's favorite haunts, Stylish yet unpretentious, a place where one could simply be. They ordered drinks, a bold red wine for Juliana, a classic old-fashioned for Asa. As the waiter retreated, a comfortable silence settled between them. Asa found himself studying Juliana's face in the warm glow of the table lamp, noting the way the light caught the delicate gold hoops in her ears. So... Juliana said at last, her fingers toying with the stem of her wine glass. 
I hope you don't mind me saying so, but I've been intrigued by you since that first day in the office. Asa felt his cheeks warm, grateful for the dim lighting. Oh? How so? Juliana leaned in slightly, her voice lowering conspiratorially. There's something about you, Asa. A depth that goes beyond the numbers and spreadsheets. I see it in the way you carry yourself, in those little glimpses of personal style that peek through. Her gaze dropped to his collar, where the silver chain lay hidden. Asa's hand moved of its own accord, fingers brushing against the concealed pendant. May I? Juliana asked softly. Heart pounding, Asa nodded. With gentle fingers, Juliana reached out, carefully drawing the necklace into view. Her eyes widened appreciatively as she took in the delicate craftsmanship of the Art Deco design. It's beautiful, she murmured, and so perfectly you. Asa's breath caught in his throat. What do you mean? Juliana's eyes met his, filled with warmth and understanding. It's elegant, yet understated. Classic, but with a modern twist. It speaks of someone who appreciates beauty and history, someone who isn't afraid to express themselves in subtle ways. Her words washed over Asa like a balm, soothing fears he hadn't even realized he'd been harboring. For so long, he'd kept Grace separate from his work life, terrified of the judgment he might face. But here was Juliana, seeing and appreciating parts of him he'd thought he had to hide. Thank you, he said softly, surprised to find his voice steady. It means a lot to hear you say that. Juliana smiled, releasing the necklace, but letting her fingers linger for a moment on Asa's hand. I believe in being true to oneself, Asa, in all aspects of life. It's not always easy, especially in the corporate world, but it's so important. As their drinks arrived, the conversation flowed more freely. Asa found himself opening up, sharing anecdotes about his love for vintage fashion and the thrill of hunting for unique pieces. Juliana listened with genuine interest, occasionally interjecting with her own stories of style discoveries and fashion faux pas. You know, she said, swirling the last of her wine, there is an exhibition opening next week at the art museum. It's all about the evolution of fashion through the decades. I was planning to go, but it's always more fun with company. Would you be interested in joining me? The invitation hung in the air, ripe with possibility. Asa felt a familiar flutter of anxiety, but it was overshadowed by a surge of excitement. Here was a chance to share a part of himself he'd kept hidden for so long, to step out with someone who seemed to truly see him. I'd love to, he said, surprised by the conviction in his voice. It sounds fascinating. Juliana's smile was radiant. Wonderful. It's a date, then. As they gathered their things to leave, Asa felt as though a weight had been lifted from his shoulders. The evening had been a revelation, a glimpse of what might be possible if he allowed his two worlds to merge. Walking back to their respective cars, Juliana paused, turning to face Asa. Thank you for tonight, she said softly, for sharing a bit of yourself with me. I hope you know how special that is. Before Asa could respond, she leaned in and pressed a gentle kiss to his cheek. The scent of her perfume enveloped him, a heady mix of florals and spice that made his head spin. Good night, Asa, Juliana murmured, squeezing his hand before turning to go. I'm looking forward to our museum date. Thanks for watching my girlies! Be sure to check out Patreon for more!